Welcome to the Ron Johnson Discipleship Podcast. So glad to be with you today talking about the Lordship of Christ and connecting the dots between who he is and what the Bible has to say and, and uh, so many of the issues that we're facing in our culture today. We have a lot of things to talk about because there's a lot going on yep. in America today. But, you know, first of all, we always like to bring uh, you folks up to speed as far as opportunities that you have if you're one of our uh, listeners, uh, opportunities that you have to really enjoy some amazing uh, events that are going to be happening here at Living Stones if you're within driving distance. Even if you're not within driving distance, some of these things are worth you know driving here for. And so let's begin with uh, Sunday. We have a special. Yes. coming Sunday night. We have uh, David Rubin from Israel visiting us. Yes, yes. Our first time we've done that. And um, and I, I think I shared on a previous podcast uh, that, you know, while, while we were doing our I-54 campaign, you know, Marion and I made our pledge as leaders and we, we sacrificed and and uh, and trusted the Lord for a gift that was bigger than, you know, what we could do in the natural. And, uh, and God just absolutely uh, blessed us that year. And one of the things that, that happened is I got an all expense paid trip to go to Israel. Mm -hmm. And I'd never been to Israel before. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, while we were there, of course, we got to see a lot of uh, both the historical sites and the uh, religious sites. Uh, so it was amazing, the biblical sites. Uh, but one of the treats and highlights of that time was we were invited into the home of, of David Rubin and his precious family. Uh, and as pastors, the group that I was with, we, we were able to do a, a, a Sabbath, you know, Seder a meal with him on that, on that Friday night. And, um, and just watched how they do what they do every week. What does that look like? And what's the biblical, you know, significance? And it was, I mean, it was moving. Mm -hmm. and, and during that time, uh, he shared his testimony, which I won't give away now on, uh, on this podcast. Uh, but the testimony had us all just, at least I'll speak for myself. I was in tears. Um, just hearing uh, what he had been through, uh, the headline is this, he and his son were uh, victims of a terrorist attack um, where their car was just riddled with uh, machine gun you know, bullets. And uh, miraculously, and he'll, he'll go into that detail, but miraculously, he survived that experience, as did his son, and then out of that grew a really, really powerful ministry. Mm. Uh, and he'll be talking about that. And, and I get back to, to kind of why we're doing this. You know, um, I remember hearing um, uh, Robert Morse, uh, pastor of Gateway Church. He was talking about um, God's blessing on their church. And they're a generous church as we are. They have a core value of, of generosity like we do. But he was reading in the Bible and came upon that passage that said, you know, uh, to the Jew first and then the Gentile. Um, referring to Paul's admonition that we need to to remember our Jewish uh, roots because they're the ones who brought us the law and the prophets and of course all of that pointed revealed who God was and revealed God's plan of redemption and and that was the line through which Jesus came mm -hmm. and and so we have Paul said basically we're in, indebted to our Jewish friends to pray for them to love them to bless them um, because, you know, we're indebted to them for, for, for that, you know. And, uh, and so Robert Morris was saying the first offering that they take every year at their church is an offering to bless the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, many, many Jews now are secular. They're, they're almost um, uh, godless um, in terms of, of their faith. Uh, many of them are hardened to, to, the, to you know, Jewish faith and to certainly to Jesus and um, so it's not like there's something special about uh, the Jewish people in terms of their you know they're all dynamic God lovers that's just not the case there are many who are but but the principle is we bless those people we we bless them because they're God's chosen people we bless them because they're the apple of his eye we bless them because of what they've been through and we bless them because we also believe uh, as Romans teaches that there's going to be a a great end time harvest of Jewish people that are going to have the veil removed from their eyes and they're going to see Christ as the Messiah. And so they have a practice at Gateway Church where they take the, the first offering of the year and they just dedicate that towards, um, you know, blessing the Jewish people, whatever ministry that looks like. So 
Uh, that was really something that spoke to my heart, and we've been doing that for the last several years. Uh, and we've last couple of years, we received an offering, our very first offering of the year, and just dedicated it toward uh, toward Israel. Yeah. And um, and so what we're going to be doing on Sunday night, in addition to hearing David's amazing story, is um, we're going to be receiving a love offering that we're going to combine with what we've already received. And I believe he's going to be walking away with a very generous gift toward his amazing school there that is really dedicated to, to teaching and training young people, but especially those who have been traumatized by terrorist acts. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be uh, an opportunity for, if you're in the area, to come on out. It's powerful. You're going to be challenged. He's written extensively, too. He's called uh, Israel's Trusted Voice. A lot of the uh, news media in America, when they want to know what's really happening on the ground in Israel, they invite David Rubin to come and to speak. He'll be with us Sunday morning uh, for all three services. Uh, that'll be more of a, uh, a teaser to whet people's appetite. Yeah. And then he'll be speaking. Uh, we'll be interviewing him, actually, for this, this podcast. Uh, we'll be interviewing him on Sunday night. And, uh, and he has an assortment of books. I encourage you, even as you hear this on Thursday, uh, to go online and, and take a look at some of his books. He will have all of those here for purchase. Uh, but he has written extensively on like what, what the United States could learn from Israel and all the terrorist attacks on Israel because, we, of course, we're dealing with a, an increased uh, you know, terrorist activity in America but with Antifa and some of these types of organizations. So, yeah. um, and I just wanted to read uh, several passages of Scripture here. This is Genesis chapter 12. Um, verses 1 through 3, God says, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Again, God's, God's promise uh, to Abraham. Um, I like this one too. Psalm 122, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They that love thee shall prosper. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will say now, peace be within thee. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. So that's Psalm 122. Again, just talking about how important it is to pray for Israel, pray for peace, and to seek seek their good and to seek their blessing. Of course, they've been a, a trusted ally uh, of the United States for years and years and years. Uh, and uh, and I think that's part of the reason why God has blessed us you know, as a nation. So you will not want to miss uh, David Rubin. This coming Sunday night, we're going to be starting at 6 o'clock. I encourage you to get here early. We have only one sanctuary and three services uh, of people to fill that sanctuary. So I'm expecting a full house and, uh, and a really great night. So praise the Lord for that. Um, and the following week, we have also another powerful event. So much fun. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk a little bit about what we call Bob, and that's called the Band of Brothers Bob. Yeah, the network of churches we're, we were part of have our Northern Comments Conference is yeah. coming up this coming week on what Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And we're expecting about 300 men to come out um, for a workshop, fellowship, speakers, worship. Yeah. So. And I, I'm believing actually for 500 men. I want to fill our sanctuary. <laughs> and I believe uh, we've got enough men, uh, if you're watching just from our own church, that could, could fill the sanctuary. But this includes all of our northern churches. Yeah. And uh, you're going to be doing a, a breakout session, right? Yeah. I need to check back into that. <laughs> check out the timing for that. Yeah. I, we, have, we, have, we have a number of our, of our uh, team here at Living Cells that we'll be sharing. I have the joy of kicking things off on Thursday night. Um, and uh, and our, our theme this year is on possessing the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really a strong call for men to uh, take possession of the responsibilities, the areas God's given us to lead yeah. and, uh, and to do a good job, you know. And so we're going to be talking about that. But what's your, what's your breakout session on? Uh, we're talking about uh, Kingdom, the marketplace. Um, I think whole time, whole time and I are teaming up to to kind of share uh, that's good so on that. that's what i love too this is these are not just narrow uh topics they they're broad based so there's topics on the marketplace there's topics on uh marriage and family uh on missions you know i mean you you name it we, we run the gamut on all kinds of special uh breakout sessions to equip people yeah. and uh, and the food is phenomenal our our team is phenomenal and, uh, and you won't want to miss that. So you can still register. Um, you can go to our website to register. Go to NRP, uh, uh, NR Pastors, rather, 
uh, and you can register on their website as well. So that's going to be really, really good. And, you know, yeah. we just kicked off our, our next season of uh, discipleship groups, and um, and these are kind of by invitation only. It's not something we promote largely. I think next year we're going to go more public with it. But this is just more relational, and, and you and I would, and whoever else is doing the discipling uh, would just pray and and we kind of get the names of some guys that God's laid on our heart, and then we do the same thing. We've got ladies groups that are going on. But um, we just kicked ours off last night, and I was sharing with you. Uh, I'm just reminded uh, about how important it is for men to be together. Most men don't have a band of brothers. That's their tribe, and it's and they hang out, and they, they fellowship. And, you know, one of the guys last night was saying, man, I'm, I'm not used to being in a group of men where we're all being real and genuine and authentic and, and pursuing the Lord together. And um, this is a little new to me, and you know, I just pointed out this is new to most men. Yeah. Uh, most men don't have these types of experiences where they can really do that iron sharpens iron thing and, and be in, a, in the midst of a group of men who are all pursuing Jesus together. And so um, I was just, again, I stayed in the parking lot last night after the group was over and talking with one of the men till 11 o'clock at night, uh, and we were just both charged over what God was doing and and just celebrating all that. So I just want to encourage you, especially if you're a man who's watching, how important it is to be plugged in, to be a part of a great church, to, to have godly friendships, again, which is something many men just don't have a lot of godly friends, uh, people you could really lean on, uh, to be some beyond the surface, you know, water cooler kind of conversations, but to go deep with and to talk about issues that, that impact our, our manhood uh, and our calling as men in general. So that was just... I'm just excited about what God's doing there as well. Yeah, the intimacy to be able to share, to be transparent, um, to be known and to know others. Yeah. Um, that's something that we really try to measure on. Yeah, so we do that with our market share, with our business uh, men and women. We do that with our common ground, which deals with our, our young adults and finding a place for them to really connect. We just launched our life groups, which I'm so excited about all across the region. Bottom line is you just really need to find a, uh, your tribe, number one, and you need to find a place where you can get connected and uh, and stay in relationship. We need that so, so desperately. Yeah, so, now, in the larger news, uh, you've been keeping abreast, and I appreciate it, of, of uh, something that is a huge issue. In fact, we've, we've addressed it on this podcast before, and that's the whole issue of election integrity. Yeah. And, you know, we talked, even when this was, even when the election was just freshly over, um, of course, there was lots of accusations of, of fraud or the election being stolen and all that kind of thing. And we said, irregardless of your political party, if you care about integrity and you care about uh, the truth in the system, election integrity should be something that we're all deeply concerned about. Because if you can't trust the process, then why vote? Because if things are already rigged from the beginning or they're so corrupt that that uh, the, the outcome is already determined before you even go to the polling booth, then why would anybody even care to vote? So it's really, really important that, that at least we discover what happened and what and was there any fraud. Of course, go ahead and share because cause this uh, uh, Arizona audit's been really Yeah, deep. so I mean, general polling, not that I really trust the polling, but general polling has shown that um, up to 50 or 60 percent of America um, has some level of doubt about the 2020 election. Okay, so, so this is so our, our America's divided. Uh, at least half of Americans are, uh, are going. Hey. Seems like a majority things like something. At least something was was sketchy. And um, you know we haven't talked much about it because we're waiting for the results of this official audit a commission by the Arizona Senate, who they audited the Maricopa County, which is the fourth largest county in the United States. And I really encourage you guys, if you're interested, to go watch the, 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 the video review of the, the report yourself or read the report yeah. yourself. I'm not going to get into too many details yeah. here. Well, I, give I, us the headlines yeah, because the, the findings were, were startling. And, of course, the mainstream media, uh, it, they're part of the problem this, because cause they, they're slanting uh, the report, which was a pretty damning report. This, this is deep frustration with the mainstream media. I mean, if you still have faith in the mainstream media, I mean... I, I've, I've given up all faith in, in yep. everything on the mainstream media. I mean, this is what happened basically the night before the, the report came out, which was last Friday. Um, somebody leaked a draft of the report. 
Okay, and then the course, headline. There's no accountability. We hear this yeah. all the time, leak this, leak that. Right. Nobody's head is ever on the chopping block, as it should be. There should be people accountable and responsible for that, but it happens. it's almost a technique now. Well, the, the headlines from the leak report that CNN and other you know, media, I saw the headlines. I, I read the report on CNN. I read it myself. Uh, it was very difficult to read, um, but it was like it, it confirmed that Biden won. Well, the problem is that this is not a recount. This is an audit. So part of the report talk about the, a small piece talk about the actual recount, but the recount show that you know the votes. This is the count of the vote and so forth. So, like you said, mm -hmm. if you're if if you're doing a recount and and, it, and you're doing it on a checking balance or on a, a savings yeah. account, and it says that there's a hundred dollars in there. The recount just means you grab the money, grab money you go count, one, two, count three, yep, right, there's right. 100. That's, that's the recount. That's not the audit. But an audit the actually audit goes to each the, bill yeah. and says, is that a legitimate bill? Okay, so you could have 100 bills, but 50 yeah. of them could be counterfeit. This is, someone mentioned this. I read it on Telegram. It's hilarious. He says, if you have a million dollars and $100,000 is fake, and when they count it, they count a million dollars. That doesn't mean you have a million dollars. When they do the audit, they realize a hundred thousand dollars is fake. So you get to keep the nine hundred thousand dollar and a straight ticket to jail. Exactly. Yeah. That's what happens when you have. So, so they just share that headline without sharing or without going to depth, depth about the discrepancies and the potential fraud and all. And all it can't confirm who won, who lost. It just shows you how many votes are are questionable. Right. Okay. We don't know those votes went to who or not or who. There's so many question marks. That's not the point of the audit to see who won, who lost. So it's not about DNR. Right. The point of the audit is saying there. Are, again, read the report yourself. There's upwards of potentially oh, potential at least fifty thousand votes. Okay. That's questionable for and various it, different reasons. And you were pointing out this. This is not like. Again, we're not talking about D's and R's because Maricopa County is actually an R. Yeah, the Maricopa board, it, it, I mean, it gets into, man, this is the deep rabbit hole if you keep going down yeah. there. Because, uh, mind you, in Arizona, uh, it was only won by about 10,000 votes. So they found like four or five times the margin just in that. Now, not even talking about all the other discrepancies, right. but the deleted files that, that it was connected to the internet. I think that the, the expert witness who talked through all that was like, you know, a, a kid hacker could hack into the system. And they even show evidence was connected to the internet. And the night before the audit was supposed to take place, there were millions of... Well, they, there was a deletion. There was someone came and deleted tons and tons of data that was illegal. Uh, deleting all this data before, like in February, before okay, now all this, this, this is canceled. illegal. You're tampering yeah. with with the uh, the data, right? Yeah. The evidence. Again, again, don't take my word for it. Go read, go yeah. listen to the audit yourself, or go listen to some other experts talking about people who really are not just bashing, tossing this as a conspiracy theories. Because now we can talk about this is official. This is official Arizona Senate audit report. Right. We're not just throwing random things out. Um, but but the question, okay, so we'll get into more. There's much more detail we're not going to get into. But we'll probably get into it. Why should Christians, why should disciples of Jesus Christ care about an audit in Arizona for the yeah. Maricopa County? Yeah, and why here we are on the Ron Johnson Discipleship Podcast where our goal is to bring the Lordship of Christ to life. And again, this gets into to your view of uh, the church, if your understanding of the kingdom versus a very narrow view of of just uh, salvation in the in the heart. What, what our contention has been is that Jesus is Lord of everything. That, that's what the Bible teaches. Jesus is Lord of all. And uh, so it's not just that he's concerned about the next life. He's concerned about this life. Yep. And we've seen, you know, in countries where there's no election integrity, you end up having a single party that wins every year. You have a, usually a dictator who gets elected, mm -hmm. if we want to use that word, sure. every year. Uh, people's rights are trampled, uh, people's liberties are, are discarded, and uh, and you end up, your nation turns into hell, literally. I mean, the people uh, are miserable, and there's poverty, and there's uh, inequality, and injustice, and, and so when we ask this question, like, why are we talking about this, and what should the church even care about an election audit, um, or if you do, are you that political church? Um, it's like, folks, hello, you know, d does... Does the gospel have any impact on human history? That's really what we've been dealing with in our in the sermon series. I encourage, encourage people to to uh, to tune in to our series we've been doing called Undefeated. But basically, a lot of Christians have this idea that that God just is concerned with the future, like when He comes back and 
you know, uh, heaven and all that. And that in the meantime, we're just kind of hanging out and we should be disengaged. You know, politics is dirty, right? Right. And we should just stay out and kind of mind our own business and just do Sunday school and, you know, and sit around and do Bible studies at our churches while the culture, you know, goes to hell, so to speak. And so what we're trying to say is, should Christians can be concerned about election fraud in America? The answer should be absolutely. And should Christians be on the front edge of making sure we remedy and change and bring justice? If, if there has been fraud, that we bring justice to the ones who perpetrated that. Is this stuff that are Christian concerns? Or should, should the Church of Jesus Christ be concerned about election fraud? Well, how about this? Should we be concerned about truth? Should we be concerned about justice? Should we be concerned about liberty? Um, I think all of these are biblical issues. And to just, you know, put our head in the sand and to pretend like somehow that's out of our, uh, you know, out of, out of our job description shows you how, what a narrow, uh, impotent, irrelevant uh, conception of the gospel that many pastors and many churches have. Uh, and I would say, how can we not care about these issues? Do you care about your kids, about your grandkids, about the future of our nation, about the liberties that we enjoy here in this country? Um, you know, it's like we, we should be on the cutting edge of, of exposing lying, cheating, corruption, injustice, wherever it's found, if you care about the, the environment in which you want to live. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I, I, I think it's going to be a long time before you and I go to heaven, at least I pray so. Uh, that's the, the Lord knows. But in the meantime, I want to live in a, in a nation that's free and a nation that promotes justice and freedom and blessing and opportunity. That's the America we've lived in, but that's not the America that we're going to enjoy if we don't address some of these deep issues, like swamp-like issues of corruption and, uh, and globalist uh, you know, stuff that's going on and, and ungodly government and lying mainstream media. Uh, with no integrity and no accountability. I mean, we, we've got to address these things before we lose it all. I, I got a Bible verse, yep. simple Proverbs 11, 1. The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate ways find favor with him. He cares. He cares about accuracy. He cares about justice. He cares yeah. that that when we when one person cast a vote, that one vote is counted. Yeah. When you have other votes that's illegitimate, it, it dilutes the legitimate vote of a person. Yeah. This is not a DNR issue. This is a, and again, shocking, shocking. How could this be? You know, if you look at the history of mankind, history shows that there's a gradual slippery slide towards yep. centralized power, towards corruption, towards a disengagement from local government, from, from the people, and more centralized, more power, tyranny. Yep. That is the gradual slide of history over and over again. Yep. So for this to happen, it shouldn't be a surprise. But the gospel is the is the is the speed bump, is the hindrance yeah. to that slippery slide. To say integrity matters, and our allegiance is not to government. Our allegiance is to God. Yeah, and you I know? think I think the 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 more profound we see a, a turning away from the Bible and the and the commands of God, which are to lead us. I'm going to be getting into that in a few weeks here. Uh, sometimes Christians have an anti-law view, like the law was the Old Testament. Now we're under grace. No, the law is a perfect reflection of the character and the heart of God. The law is beautiful. There's nothing the matter with the law except that it exposed our sin and our inability to keep it. That's why we need grace. That's why we need Jesus. And so grace is how we're saved. But after you're saved, you don't disregard the law and the commandments of God. That, those are the guidelines for a prosperous life. And, and I'll give you an example. And we just had a situation where the entire... Uh, House of Representatives, at least the Democratic majority, I think all but one, voted for the most radical, basically abortion anytime, anywhere throughout the entire pregnancy for any reason. Uh, I mean, it would, it would basically, it was written to completely obliterate all state law regarding abortion uh, restrictions. Um, this passed almost unanimously by every single Democrat in our house. The most vile, wicked, radical piece of pro-abortion law ever to be uh, created 
uh, it's certainly in America, but even globally. I mean, we're, we're on the top. We're a leader in global wickedness as it relates to abortion. This is America. So if you think that God just turns his head on these issues and and it doesn't matter, or that the church should, we call that, uh, you know, we call abortion now a political issue. It's not a political issue. It's a biblical issue. It's a life issue. It is, it is an integrity issue. It's an issue that cheapens life for all of us. It makes, it coarsens life for everybody that lives. It, it just, it has a horrific corrosive effect on American uh, uh, values and on the sanctity of life across this nation. Uh, the church should be leading the way, and yet, I've run into pastor after pastor said, I, I won't touch that from the pulpit. I don't deal with political issues. You know, to me, that is just a, a moral dereliction of duty, you know, for a pastor not to have a prophetic voice and to speak out on issues like this shows you that you just have your, your head, you know, in the, in the ground uh, and you are, you are not leading courageously and you're not leading strong. Uh, and, and that's, that's a problem. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about our uh, our undefeated series because I think we're trying to, to touch that. And I want to look up a passage here real quickly. I think I shared this with you before. Um, but to me, this is a message for spiritual leadership. So if you're leading in any way, um, I just want to share this. This is uh, Ezra chapter 10. Um, and of course, Ezra is coming as a, a prophet and a scribe to teach the people the law of God after they've fallen away, and, and, and this is, this is a, a, a Reformation passage of Scripture, and he says that in Ezra, Ezra chapter 10, verse 1, he prayed and he made this confession, weeping and lying face down on the ground in front of the temple. A large crowd of people gathered around him, men and women and children, and they wept bitterly with him. So, so they realized that the cause of their problems was their unfaithfulness to God. And here he is on his face weeping, and this large crowd gathers, and they're all on their face repenting. I believe that repentance is the starting place for revival and reformation, and it has to start with God's people. We need to repent for where we failed to stand for truth. But I want you to see what happens next. This, this to me, is, is a blueprint for spiritual leaders in the church. Because here he's laying on the ground weeping. He's brokenhearted over the conditions and over the spiritual condition of the people. But this is what one of the leaders said to Ezra, the spiritual leader. Um, he said, verse 4, get up. So after we repented, get up. Now it's time to do something. He said, for it's your duty to tell us how to proceed in setting things straight. That to me is the message to men of God. Is It's our duty to get up, to start leading, and to start uh, teaching people how to get back on the straight path to God's blessing and God's goodness and God's favor. So get up. Tell, your, it's your duty to tell us how to proceed and set anything straight. And then he says this, we're behind you. So be strong and take action. Um, I, we're finding this to be true at Living Stones. There are people looking for leaders. And they're like, hey, Pastor Andrew, if you'll lead, you show us the way. Tell us what to do. We'll follow you. Right, they're they're looking for leaders. I see this all the time. In fact, we we have people flocking to to our church simply because we're we're actually taking a courageous stand to help people during these treacherous times. We're providing letters for them, and and I'll say this, you know, again on this podcast: if you need a letter, contact the church. Uh, we'd be glad to stand with you for your religious liberty and for your rights of conscience. These are these are unalienable uh, rights coming from the Lord himself, and we can't afford just to throw these things on the ground. But, but stand up. It's your duty to lead the way. We're behind you. Be strong. Take action. And, and that's really been the heartbeat behind, the, I think, this sermon series. I've, I've been trying to instill a theology of hope in people that we shouldn't, like, bite our nails, wring our hands, and, you know, fall into depression and go get our Xanax, you know, uh, renewed so we can survive. This is the time to be bold and to take action. And, and I really want to encourage you, if you're watching, uh, don't shrink back, you know, stand up. We're, we're dealing with people every week that are facing job loss. They're, they're being ostracized at work for simply following their conscience. They're, they're being made to feel like they're being selfish or irresponsible. All this stuff is nonsense. You're also being felt like you're a minority. You're not a minority. You're part of probably half of America who feels just like you do. 
So it really is time to stand, to take action, and to trust the Lord, and to not, not fall back into depression and gloom and despair, but to really live in the joy of the Lord. Absolutely. Um, so this Sunday, I'm excited. We're going to be having David Rubin with us, and we're going to be continuing the series called Undefeated. And really what I'm going to start doing now is laying uh, some pillars in place for you know solid uh, structures that support our hope and give us reason to believe that God is still large, still in charge, and that America is not, you know, hopeless, uh, that God can do a radical transformation through his church even now if we'll, if we'll believe him. So, Absolutely. so I'm excited about that. Okay. So any, any final word from you? No, I mean, again, we're, we're prisoners of hope. I think sometimes to get better, you have to get worse mm -hmm. first. Uh, in fact, I look at all the people that God has used, mm -hmm. and um, if you follow their life journey, after God's called them, um, first their life goes into um, <laughs> deep darkness or depressions or whatever for a journey for years in the middle of that. I think even in the process. But you know what? The Lord has a call, and that process to refine us. I think as a nation, we're being refined, and we're seeing what's really in, in us. I think the church is being refined right yeah. now. Yeah. And, um, leaders lead and this is a time if you resolve to be a leader um to really hear from the lord and, yeah. and, and ask god to purify you yeah i would say too you know people when when unexpected things come up or you know you're like oh my gosh what's going on your world yeah. is turned upside down many people are reactionary uh they just you know freak out or they oh i gotta do this or i gotta sell my house or i gotta look for a new job or you know i mean they they get in the reactionary mode i would encourage you don't react get before the lord and rest and sit in his presence and let god's word feed you and listen to what the holy spirit's saying and don't don't make reactionary you know decisions um uh, make prayerful decisions don't ever react out of hopelessness or despair or fear uh, those kind of emotions are not part of the kingdom. Make sure that you're living in joy and peace. Make sure that no matter what's going on, uh, don't allow yourself to be robbed of your joy and your peace. Make a courageous stand. Make a convictional stand. Yeah. You know, stand for what you believe, and then trust the Lord. Yeah. And uh, and I just believe this with all my heart that that the Lord is sovereign. He's controlling your life if you if you submit yourself to Him. He knows the beginning from the end and. I think God's getting ready to promote a lot of people. Uh, I believe there's going to be blessing as well. And I encourage you, I talked to an attorney. He said, absolutely, get one of these letters and file it uh, on your employment records wherever you work. Because uh, once the dust settles, I believe there's going to be some serious lawsuits because this is a, a serious government overreach. It's a serious infringement upon your liberties yeah. um and uh, and as a government overreaction we're still talking about a sickness that claims one percent of those who are actually infected with it so i mean th this is a major overreaction and i believe there's going to be lawsuits uh, uh, forthcoming and when you have that letter uh, that religious liberty letter in your file uh, uh, that is proof that you did everything that you could possibly do to make a courageous stand and and to appeal to your rights and those rights were denied and i think there's going to be a lot of businesses that are going to re be regretting uh the stance that they took because it's going to come back to bite them so um again if we can help you 219-663-PRAY which is 7729 219-663-7729 call our church uh we'll be glad to help you and to support you as you uh lead and take action and make a courageous stand for for liberty so any no. final words? No. All right. Good. David Rubin, Sunday night. We hope you guys can make it. There. And uh, the following weekend, Band of Brothers. So all you men, make sure you get signed up. Mm -hmm. It is going to be an awesome, awesome time. Until then, have an amazing day today. Let's go out and shine and be the light we've been called to be in this dark world. And, uh, and never lose hope. God is on our side and he's not done with America or the nations of the world. Have a great week.